He sits alone, cold, tired. Once again, problems have arisen with the ram. Maybe I might need to start calling it the problem ram. Yes, look at her. She's old, she's beat up. But if you recall videos that I made this summer, I replaced almost everything as far as fuel system. Fuel tank was taken out, drained the tank, emptied it completely, new uh, sending unit, completely did the entire steel line underneath the truck, brand new, new rubber lines, all the way up to the fuel pump itself, uh, new fuel pump, fuel filter, the line up to the carburetor, remained the same but it was clear, replaced the carburetor, and still this thing, it'll start driving now again, and it just dies. Why does this happen? I don't understand. So what I'm going to do is kind of force feed some fuel into it because it seems like it's lacking in fuel. It's staying up idling, but once you step on the gas, uh, any bit more than just a little over idle, it falls on its face and it's dying. So it seems like it's starving of fuel and I don't know why. I checked the fuel filter, it was a little bit dirty, so I'm hoping maybe that's what it was. But to be sure, I bought one of these cheapo $10 eBay fuel pumps and I'm just going to force fuel right to it because I'm afraid that for whatever reason it's just not getting fuel up at the right rate to the carburetor and uh, we'll make this thing have to drink some fuel. So I really love this truck. For 800 bucks, this thing hauled almost all the lumber for that thing minus the really large beams. Actually even some of the posts actually I took with it all of the wood for the siding the rafters like this thing eight foot bed it's more than paid for itself already but still i mean if i can get this thing running again i would like to keep using it so as you can also see we got a couple feet of snow this weekend oh man that's heavy nice pancake of snow on top of it right now right now what i did i kind of rigged it up so i'm like okay let's bypass everything in the back from the fuel tank up here so the fuel line going from where the fuel tank was, I blocked off here with a bolt. And I'm running fuel down from this separate little one gallon tank right here directly into the fuel pump down here. All right? Goes into the fuel pump, gets pumped through this filter, comes up the steel line here to the carburetor, which is a brand new carburetor, and she falls flat. So I'm going to replace that um, fuel filter, I'm going to cut it open too and see what's inside of it. And then I'm going to put in line that fuel pump I was talking about and see what happens. First off, we're just going to try replacing the fuel filter, see if that's what's causing the blockage. If that doesn't fix anything, then we're going to go to the fuel pump. Show you a little bit what I'm talking about, see if it'll even turn over and go the way it was going. Probably not going to kick over as is right now. Take off the old trusty, rusty air cleaner. So as you can see, my Holly 2 barrel, it's pretty fresh. So we're going to splash a little bit of fuel down the old gullet. Oh yeah, too much. That's all right. We'll just start a fire in the engine compartment. That'll be fun. So, see it went there. Almost. Ooh, it's in Floyd. See, it's just struggling to get fuel. And when it does run, it'll just barely go, and if you touch the pedal, it'll freaking die. All right, let's pop off this old fuel filter and see if that is at the root of this problem. I'm gonna disconnect my fuel line. There was fuel just in that, so that's good. That tells me it was actually drawing fuel through this line. 
by the vacuum you know that is drawn inside of the fuel pump again this is not a recommended uh, method it's a quick way to see if we're getting fuel inside all right so here's the fuel filter I'm gonna try not to let any leak out because what I want to do is observe the fuel that comes out of it against like some paper something clean and uh, you know see if there's crap with it and then we'll also cut this thing apart all right looks like pretty oh there we go see that see this black stuff here yeah so this is the inlet so fuel was coming from the tank from this way coming up through here through the fuel pump itself hopefully the fuel pump isn't screwed up and then getting blocked here inside the filter before it passed through and went to the carburetor and you could already see right there that little bit of black crud it's telling me there's probably a bunch of crap inside of there and we're gonna take it apart real quick and see what's up okay so here inside is the actual filter element and I don't know if you can see but look at all this crap I mean sure there's a little bit of stuff from where I just ground it but let's get it cut open a little bit more and you can see a little better Ooh, yeah so now we can really see what what went on down in here and we can look in the folds of this filter and see it's pretty dirty so what I'm hoping is that this thing is just so clogged it was preventing fuel getting to the carburetor so we're gonna put a new filter on real quick and uh, see what happens out here So just got one of these cheaper clear ones I got this on eBay like a pack of eight of them for like ten bucks something like that the good thing about these is you can monitor visually if there's a bunch of crap in there or not you know the other ones you can't really see what's going on so we will know for sure if this thing is getting all dirty with more crap in that tank I'm telling you I cleaned that thing out best as I could but apparently I guess there was still more junk in it so you know what are you gonna do cry about it no. figure it out all right that's what we do and we'll retighten this line let me get a light put you right here so again, we've completely cut off the fuel tank from the back. This is acting as our fuel tank. Dump a little bit of extra gas down the, down the pipe again, because right now there's no fuel in that line. Okay. Almost. Trying to get it to draw fuel up into the the bowls all right okay doesn't look like it's really pumping enough fuel so then we're gonna have to use the electric one to help add it and see what happens got to do a little quick wiring here so I got my Eastwood solderless connector crimping kit this thing is awesome Really nice tool. Locks in, crimps down, and once you hit it all the way, releases. The colors here match with the sizes for the associated fittings. What I first want to do is just get it wired and test it. I used to be so scared of wiring. It's really not that hard. What do all these colors mean? They're just ways to help you identify which color or which wire is going where. I used to think like, I don't know, these colors are different. They mean different kinds of material it's, it's all copper it's just a different color to help you identify stuff all right so what I did here is I just I cut my line stripped it and I'm gonna take the electrical connector insert like so get the crimper there it is line it up Red connector, red dot, and boom. Crimp, look at that, beautiful. It's on there tight, right? Now I'm gonna come here to this end. Go here, take off this end, 
and expose this wire here, right? Again, red, black, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna go this one here for right now. And usually, obviously, red means positive, black is your ground, but what I'm saying is orange or yellow versus red right now, it's, again, it's just the skin on the wire itself. It doesn't mean that there's anything different on the inside. So we're gonna go like this here too, strip, twist, get it all tight and together. Uh, where are we at? Right here. Inside like so. Get that lined up right there perfectly. Making sure to keep pressure in on it so that the, the wire doesn't walk out and then you miss it and it's not actually connecting in there. So pushing in and crimp. Boom. Pull it, make sure that it's not going to come undone. You should be able to pull pretty hard.